business. I thought that was kind of neat because the career which I've been around about way found myself in, I'm in the business of art. So I work at the Art Gallery of Hamilton as the business director. So what I do is I run five business departments within the gallery that make money to support the gallery's activities. So for example, my biggest business unit is a busy wedding and corporate event business. So we have weddings non-stop using our facilities uh, throughout the year. We do media launches, cocktail parties, all kinds of things. We run multiple retail locations. We have a large film festival that just wrapped up and a number of other activities. So really, if you're starting off your studies uh, at the beginning of your university career and presuming that you're going to be training for something five years from now, we don't even know if that'll exist. Certainly my job that I do right now at, at the art gallery, that doesn't exist. I'm part of a new field of jobs that's being created in nonprofits and charities who are getting less and less government funding and have to find ways to make their own money. So I want to walk through for you guys exactly what an informational interview is and encourage you to do it. Um, so the way, I'll, I'll start right from the top, we'll do this a little chronologically. Being everywhere is the first way to get to a point where you can do these interviews because people are always much more willing to spend a few minutes with you if they've already met with you and have a positive impression. So if you're going out to events that, say, association events that are related to a field you might want to go into, um, it could be research events going on here at the university, really anything you can think of that's in the area you're interested in, that's the best way to start. To get out there, to meet a few people, to shake a few hands, and make a positive impression. Something you guys might want to consider is getting what's called a column card, right? And that can just indicate um, who you are, your contact information, and that you're a student studying towards this degree. It's very transparent. It says, here I am, and this is what I do. But it helps in any type of professional situation, because then you can go through that business card exchange, ask for somebody's card, and they also have a reference. If you happen to get a connection with somebody, get a business card, you can email back within a week. So while the memory is still fresh, the business professional probably meets a lot of people, but email me back and say, hey, we met at this event last week, we chatted briefly about this topic, refresh my memory, bring it up. Um, so now I feel like you are going to follow it up very quickly. And if you do think that this person has something you can learn from, go ahead and request a meeting. So you can just draft up a quick email or do a quick call saying, we met at this event, here's the conversation you had. I was very interested in what you were saying. Do you think you might want to you know, grab a quick coffee and share a little bit more about that? Uh, proper follow up, thank you. So you finish this meeting, you're going to go up there and at a minimum send them an email. I highly suggest you mail them a physical card. It kind of strikes that right card. People don't do it nearly often enough. And maintain contact at least twice a year. So that immediate engagement or interaction won't necessarily always go somewhere right away. But hopefully you'll have learned something, you know, it's demanded your knowledge set. And hopefully you'll leave an impression on them such that if a job does pop up with their company, you're in a good position to ask them about the job or ask they provide you as a reference. Um, I, I was raised in a you know, pretty economically depressed area in upstate New York by a single mother. And so I was the first person in my family to go to college or, or university, um, let alone to get a postgraduate degree. And so I never really had anybody helping guide me. I never really could learn from my father or my mother, you know, um, nobody in my family actually. So I, I, I felt like always I was kind of you know, blazing my own trail a little bit. And the, the other part was I wasn't doing what you guys are doing now and learning from other people. Um, so that, in fact, you, you are, you do have a leg up. Um, because think of all your colleagues who aren't here and who didn't uh, just learn from Mark um, about how you find a job in, uh, in today's, uh, today's economy. Um, so I went to uh, I went to Waterloo. I got my political science degree there, and I went to Waterloo just because one of my friends from high school was going to Waterloo. His brother had gone to Waterloo, and so I was like, okay, yeah, sounds good. I enrolled in political science because that was the one thing that I actually really liked. So I said, okay, whatever, it sounds good. Um, for me, school was about getting away from home. Um, was about becoming an adult and 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 really growing in that respect. Um, not so much about what I was actually learning um, while I was in school. But then I got into the practice of law, and the very first day, I, it hit me. I, 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 I opened up my, you know, my, my first assignment, I had talked to the partner that I was going to be looking for, and I remember thinking, oh God, I, I hope it gets better from here. And five years later, it never did. Um, so, you know, um, after that, I decided, all right, you know, that, this is unsustainable. I, I can't be a partner in, in this law firm. It would kill me to do that. Um, I had two small kids as well. And decided, uh, I was practicing in Washington, D.C., and I decided uh, it was probably better to um, move closer to our families. And 
and my wife was from Harold, and, and we, we came back here in 2009. Um, and so uh, that's when it was really good timing because uh, they were looking for somebody to help launch this organization called Innovation Factory. And so I was the first employee, I was the person who put together the whole business plan and then triggered the funding from the province. And all of a sudden, once the organization was up and running, I found myself second in command. I spent three years doing that and I uh, was working a lot with the chamber and uh, on a, a bunch of things. I was chair of the Innovation Technology Committee. I was, um, I was working on the Hamilton Economic Summit and was working on a, an event called Lions Lair, which is actually coming up um, this Thursday, which is a joint production between the Innovation Factory and the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. And my predecessor, um, he had been in the, the chamber for about 20 months. He was you know, taking in a whole new, fresh direction from, um, it, it was, it was it, the chamber was getting pissed up. Um, and so, uh, so David was doing a really great job, and then he left for another opportunity. And again, you know, being in the right place at the right time really counts for a, a lot of this. Um, I was able to position myself as the most seamless transition going forward from David, um, and ended up as the CEO and president of the Chamber of Commerce you know, four years after basically restarting my career. Um, but when I was, you know, down high school, I said, "No, okay." Good with kids, just makes sense. I should be an early childhood educator. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm going to go to school and be an ECE. Then I'll run my own Montessori program and I'll be all these great things. Woohoo! So I did. I graduated from Sheridan and you know got my ECE diploma. And I'm like, yeah, great, awesome. I started working in a Montessori school and I ended up getting sick. I got lupus. So I had got SLE, and what that means is when you guys get sick, your immune system will kick in and fight off the infection. When I get sick, my immune system goes nuts. And starts putting fluid around my heart, my lungs, and shutting down my organs. So it kills you. That's not good, especially when you work with kids who are always sick. So I'm sitting there, and all my education just woo out the window. And one day, I have to now decide what do I want to do for the rest of my life. And I was 20 years old. And you're being told, okay, so you're going to be disabled for the rest of your life. Uh, you should probably look at living on disability for the rest of your life. Uh, good luck with that. I'm like, okay, I don't really like that answer. So, after I knew what I wanted to do, I got in that pickle. So, my predicament's a little different than these guys because of it. But I didn't give up. So, I was told I had to do this, and then I ended up having my uncle say, Oh, you know what? Real estate's a really easy career for you. So, just come, you know, come work for me and be a sales rep. I was like, All right. I was very easy at that point. I'm just thinking, oh, What am I going to do? Disability or, you know, try and get another job? So, I ended up going and getting my real estate license. Uh, I did amazingly well, by the way. <laughs> you guys ever just have the ability? I know they're turning it to a longer course, but get your course now or get your real estate license now. Just hold on to it. Because it's going to make you a bowl of money. You just don't even realize it. But um, I ended up doing that, and then I realized I was doing more of the marketing um, and branding side of it. I was starting to do some graphic design and things for all the people in my, um, in my brokerage. So I kind of like that better. So after you know, I decided to do more of that, I said, you know what, I love what I do, but I got really bored really quickly in terms of being told, oh, we love you, Melissa, you're amazing, we want to work with you, but I have to go present it to my board of 15 people, and it'll take about a year to give you an answer. I'm like, oh, it was so tough hearing that. Like, you just get, without being rejected yourself, it's the process that rejects you. So I was like, okay, this is no fun anymore. And I looked at my boss, and I remember the day I quit was the day I met with Tim Hortons. And they literally said that. I have to tell my board member, and it'll take a year. I said, I love you. You're a great friend. You've given me a great opportunity. But I quit. And I had nothing to go on. I don't know. Like, it was just a throw in the dark. I'm like, I just can't do it. I quit. I'm too emotionally invested in the people sitting next to me. What Hamilton High is, the brief synopsis is that there are tons of young professional groups in this city. And so without overwhelming you guys having to go out and find them all, we are a free resource for you guys to access, okay? That will connect you to all of the young professional networking groups. Yay, we're doing the labor for you. <laughs> That's a relief, right? So when you guys come to us, it depends on what you're interested in. You know, we have young professional networking groups that are related to uh, charity. We have young professional networking groups that are strictly focused on business. We have them for manufacturing, we have them for art, all kinds of uh, industries. And so you would say, oh, you know, I'm really interested in X. Go 
awesome, you should go to this event and leave all of these people and get yourself surrounded by X group, right? So I was living in New Zealand uh, for two years after high school, playing rugby there. I uh, decided I wanted to come back to school. There were three programs, or three seats left in humanities. I was applying in like July. Not the best time to apply to university, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are three spots left, and I said, okay, which of these programs in the humanities am I going to do? Uh, all right, for communication studies, let's do that. So I ran with that for about two years, um, at which point I knew that um, I wanted to do economics as well. I thought it would be valuable to get sort of two uh, varied skill sets, one that's a little more qualitative uh, and the other that's a little more based in quantitative study. Um, went through that, had some, a lot of challenges, I think, really understanding, like, why am I learning this? Like, how does this apply? You know, where do I go with this? I'm taking this course, but what does it mean? What is it going to get me ready for? And I did really poorly. Uh, I did poorly because I thought that it was just going to be stupid. That I thought that, you know, whatever skill set that I need to learn to be successful, I would directly see the connections uh, and move forward from there. And I, and I don't think that's the case in a lot of courses you take, except for really professional uh, degrees, but even then, I mean, a very percent of what you learn and take is actually applied to this place called real world. Um, and so what I did is I lied to myself, I think, but now I'm realizing it's a really good lie, uh, is that you need to understand the courses that you're taking or the experiences that you're involved with in um, for the skill sets that they're providing you with. So the fact, you know, Mark you know, the fact that you can communicate effectively massive, massive out there. Trust me, we work with tons of different organizations and people in the business that I'm in now, and you're just like, really? really? You can't solve that problem? Or you don't think that way? Or you don't understand how this can happen? Um, or you don't know how to communicate what you need or want or how it should be? But it wasn't just the basic ones that I learned in my class, right? Like, yeah, you can do research, yes, you can communicate through a paper, um, but you also need to learn how to think. You also need to learn how to solve problems that don't have obvious answers to them, right? It's deducing, you know, from information on where you should go, what you should do, and why you should do it. Um, but you're not just going to get that in the courses. You have to supplement whatever it is you're learning in courses with extra curriculums. And so, along the way, as I was starting to make difference, I was getting invited to communities. I was in, getting invited um, to meet with people, you know, or at least have the opportunity to run into people that I never would have otherwise, right? You sit in your class every day, you see the same people. If you're not getting outside of that, where are you going to meet all those people that you should be running into? And so that's actually how I got my job, was I put on a conference uh, here addressing the gap around uh, you know, theory-based learning and, and its application in the real world. Uh, the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce at the time, David, uh, was on that panel, uh, along with Denise Doyle, who's the head of the YWCA, uh, Rebecca Bentham, who's the Hamilton uh, Law Association Executive Director, um, and it was actually through David that I said, you know what, he saw, he's like, whatever I can do for you, let me know, what did I do? I went and set up an information learning group. I said, look, these are the things that I'm really interested in. This is what I want to do. I don't know what that job is, but these are the types of skills that I really, you know, that really like, you know, flick the switch for me, that really get me involved and engaged. Um, he said, you know what, you should talk to this guy named Keenan Lewis. <laughs> right? So here I was just taking courses, three on conference to then, you know, three or four people later, running to this guy named Keenan Loomis. Eventually when Keenan um, Keenan called, he said, you know, I think we have something that you might be interested in. Why don't you come in for an interview? You know, maybe take that one. Right? Or maybe, you know, if something came across Keenan's desk that you know, from another organization said, you know what, I met with this guy three months ago. I think you're really good for this. You let me connect it. You know, but if, if you don't go out there, you don't put yourself out there. Um, and introduce yourself, who you are, what you want to do, um, how you want to make a difference in what you're doing, not just be there. Um, people aren't going to vote for you. People aren't going to open up those doors. Right? There's too many of you out there. That's the reality. Um, so you have to be willing to put in the effort to get out there. But it's turned into an amazing opportunity. Uh, I'm now the business development coordinator at Innovation Factory. Uh, we're the regional innovation center in Hamilton, uh, which essentially means uh, we try and grow businesses uh, whether they're startup businesses from like an idea, I have an idea about a business I want to start, get it right up through their angel investment and venture capital.